Hey guys, welcome to uh, TRT and Hormone Optimization Channel. I'm here with uh, Dr. Stephen Devos, also known as the Lifting Dermatologist, and Dr. Keith Nichols, uh, the almighty guru in, uh, in the TRT today. How are you guys doing? All right, good to see you guys. Cool. So the video that we wanted to do today is, uh, Keith and I, we kind of speak a lot and we had... Uh, some stuff kind of going over the past year that we thought we could share with you uh, from two totally different perspectives, uh, which will benefit the guys who say, you know, my, 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 my T is optimized, but I still don't feel dialed in. Uh, and, and this is something we're going to, we're going to kind of try to address. Um, I just, I bring up Dr. Keith Nichols name often uh, in videos that you've probably seen in the past. Uh, Keith doesn't know that I'm about to say this, but Keith is an amazing doctor. Um, Keith does not pay me a dime to say he's an amazing doctor. He is an amazing doctor. I know a number of really, really good doctors who I will refer patients to when they are looking for somebody good. Uh, Keith has never paid me a dime. These doctors have never paid me a dime. This will always be free. No one's ever paying for this. I just want people to have access to the best doctors possible and the best information possible. So if there's doctors out there that feel that they are doing a really good job at this and really understand this whole TRT and hormone authorization stuff, Please, by all means, look me up on Facebook, Danny Bossa. Uh, you'll see a picture of me and my wife. Send me a PM. Explain to me what it is you're doing, and we can have a discussion. And if I feel that you're, you're good, you can join the group. And if you know, it's being demonstrated that you know what you're doing, you would be one of those doctors that we will refer. So we want to have as many you know, people as possible we can refer. Um, Keith is in Tennessee. So if any of you guys are in the Tennessee area, or even I think it's Florida and California, you can do telemedicine. But um, yeah. yeah. Uh, kudos to Keith. Well, thank you so much for that, Danny. You're welcome. Um, so I will start and just kind of give you an, an idea of, of what's what. Welcome to this channel. I am Dr. Steven De Vos, the lifting dermatologist, and this is my bro science hunting partner, Danny Bossa. If you want to learn more about the most cutting edge science-based information in the world of hormone optimization, please like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you won't miss anything. I also invite you to join my other YouTube channel, The Lifting Dermatologist. The link you can find in the description of this video. Um, as you know, I'm a big kind of experimenter. I was constantly tweaking my protocol and, uh, you know, obviously I came from all the bro science days of taking the AI and all that type of stuff and that's obviously me obviously been proven false at this point. Uh, and then once I got comfortable with what I was doing and found a protocol that worked for me, I've tried a number of different things just to see what effect it would have on me. So this is going to be purely anecdotal, but it could apply to a lot of you out there when you, you see what I got to say. Um, basically, I once I had established my protocol, I tried to see, well, what would happen if I would take more? Okay, so some of you know that I take up, up to, well, usually it's between 250 and 300 milligrams a week of test. Um, I seem to feel better on 300 than 250 for whatever reason. I understand most of you, your, your levels would be in the stratosphere at 300. I'm not sure why I need so much. Um, but most of you probably get the levels I'm getting with 300 by taking 200 or potentially even less. But that's the dose that works for me. And at the end of the day, you want to take the amount that's going to resolve your symptoms. But it goes a little bit past that. I still had kind of some minor things that I felt could be improved. And I wondered, should I simply just raise my dose even higher? And if I did, would that go away? Because I've been touting the same statement like Keith saying, you know, if you've got symptoms, raise your dose. Under the, I guess, impression that you guys didn't take for granted that there are other factors at play here, and I'll explain. Um, I stopped training in September of last year. So we're now September, a year later. So I did not train, lift a single weight for an entire year. Uh, the reason being is my wife got pregnant. There was a complicated pregnancy. She was on bed rest. I was expanding my business. You know, then she had, we had a baby and then we moved and it was, it's just, it just wasn't in the cards. And I literally just started training about three weeks ago. Um, so I wasn't training at all. I was doing, you know, a couple of pushups here and there. Usually when I don't train, I don't eat that well. I don't eat nearly as well when I'm training as, or I don't eat nearly as well uh, when I'm not training as I do when I'm training, you know? So yes, I would go to McDonald's sometimes and I'd have that extra slice of pizza and I'd skip meals. And for lunch, I might have, uh, you know, a sandwich with peanut butter and Nutella and whatever. 
um, you know, but I was still taking the, the same, same amount of tea. So I had a couple little symptoms here and there, and I wondered what would be the impact of simply raising the dose? Would it resolve these symptoms? So I brought it up to 400 milligrams a week as an experiment just to see what would the outcome be. I was kind of curious to say, like, will it have effect on libido? Will it have effect on erections? What will be affected? Will my body composition change? Will my mood change? Will my energy levels change? And I brought it up to 400. And symptom-wise, literally nothing changed. And I pretty much felt kind of the same. I found that my sleep was a little bit affected. I, I didn't sleep quite as well as before. I did that for a couple of weeks. I said, okay, well, let me bring it up even higher. I'm going to do the experiment. I'll do it properly. I jacked it up to 500 milligrams a week. And yes, guys, I had to get the test elsewhere. My doctor would have never condoned it. And I don't condone that you do this. I did it simply for an experiment. What would happen if I did not train, kept eating the way I'm eating, stress levels are pretty constant. What would happen at this higher level of, of testosterone? And the difference was I, within about two weeks, two or two weeks or so, I felt my energy levels kind of start going down. Uh, motivation, that get up and go kind of like, uh, I felt kind of sluggish. Um, I definitely was not sleeping as well at all. Um, so the, the not sleeping well might have actually caused the sluggishness or, or whatever, or it could have all just been interrelated. And I was monitoring my weight every day. I was weighing myself every day. I was looking in the mirror every day. I was asking my wife, do you see any change? And she's like, no. And I didn't see any change. So it just goes to show that you could take higher levels of test. You know, I, had I taken, you know, a gram of week, would it have had an effect on my body compos composition? Perhaps. But seeing as how I started getting negative symptoms at that higher dose, I don't think I would have tried to just say, well, let me see if I get the six or seven or so on and so forth. Um, I just didn't feel as well. And the moment I brought it back down to my 300, I did feel a lot better. Um, at the same time, there are guys of you that this is kind of going off on a little bit of a tangent now, but there's guys of you that say, you know, Oh, well, look at Danny. He doesn't have the physique that demonstrates that he knows what he's talking about. Would it help you guys if I just jacked myself up on steroids and worked out three times a day and got to this big, huge, like, ah, this big monster? Would it? I then come across as more believable because I don't understand how the knowledge that, say, Keith or I or other people have, obviously Keith's knowledge is a million times more than mine, how that is at, related in the slightest to the way our appearance is. It, it, it's not, okay, guys? If you've got to go on the internet – and you only watch or listen to the guys that are all jacked up, be it on roids or be it they've been training for a long time, be it whatever. If the aesthetics of this person for you demonstrates their knowledge, I got news for you. I know a lot of really out of shape, really fat guys that are geniuses in this thing. Okay. So don't let appearances fool you. Uh, you know, just use a little bit of critical thinking. Okay. Because I can take some steroids and get myself jacked up and look like a million bucks. And guess what? My knowledge won't be anywhere uh, uh, further ahead than, than, than it is now. The knowledge will be the same. Um, so going back to what I was saying before, did this kind of experiment. It had really no effect. Um, I was on my steady 300, back to 300 milligrams a week and, you know, felt kind of back to normal. My sleep was improved. Uh, symptoms were pretty much staying the same. Um, now that I started training, I've been training six days a week. I wake up nice, bright and early. I have a home gym that uh, some of you guys in the group would have seen pictures that I posted in the group. So I wake up bright and early, go train for 30, 35 minutes. And then I go upstairs to work. I work from home as well, which is awesome. I've been doing that six days a week. My diet has gotten considerably better because now it's like, I know it's like, this is my fuel for my, for my workouts. So I got to make sure I'm eating well. And guess what? I feel a whole lot better. And actually, some of these little minor symptoms I was having are actually kind of going away. I, I, I feel better across the board. So you got to keep in mind that the whole notion of bringing up your levels to resolve symptoms, we were saying that under the assumption that you realize that, you know, we are assuming that you're, you're eating reasonably well, you're getting a reasonable amount of sleep, you're, you know, your stress levels are, are reasonable, uh, you're, 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 you're eating relatively well. If you're doing all that, then yes, by all means, you can raise your dose. But there is a point that once your levels are optimized, you're at a certain point and you're still having symptoms. 
it's probably not even related to petite. It could be probably related to something else entirely. Okay, so we don't want guys out there saying, you know, oh, we listen to Danny, we listen to Dr. Nichols, and I keep raising my dose, raising my dose, and I got all these symptoms. But the guy just sits on the couch watching Netflix with a bag of potato chips, and he's like, how come I can't get it up, and how come I can't have sex with my wife, and how come this, and how come that, and, you know, this testosterone nonsense doesn't work. No, it's, it's you know, the expression, you're, always as, you're only as strong as your weakest link. If you got crap diet but you're training great and you're on TRT and you're sleeping great, guess what? That crap diet's going to slow you down. And if you've got great diet, you're training well and you're on TRT, but you're not getting enough sleep, that's going to slow you down. Or if you're not on TRT, it's going to slow you down. You've got to have all of these factors in place. Otherwise, don't go blame the protocol. There's so many, I, I talk to Keith all the time. He says he wouldn't believe the amount of men that come to see me and say, you know, it's not working. And I'm like, well, you know, what's your, what are your diet? And he finds out what they're eating or they're not, they're not doing the other things that are necessary. This is not some magic bullet like I'm going to give myself a shot and I'm going to look like a supermodel. I'm going to have, you know, no, it doesn't work this way, guys. All right. So they're, they're, if you're going to keep saying, well, I'm just going to keep jacking up and jacking up and jacking up, it, it, it's just not going to do anything. You got to get all these other things in place. Now, Keith um, wants to talk about his side of things. He had experienced this in a different way for me. So Keith, I'll let you explain uh, what's gone on with you in the past year that is similar yet different from what I just explained. Sure, that was a good point, Danny. So basically what you've outlined is there comes a time when you've gotten the benefits of testosterone or raising your dose any more than what it was at, provided you with no additional benefits. In fact, maybe even some side effects, correct? Correct. And I think that's a, you know, that's a very good point. I think you also hit very very well, the uh, notion that symptom resolution can be somewhat misleading. Uh, I think it's a misleading term at times. When we talk about symptom resolution or improvement, we are talking about the symptoms directly related to testosterone deficiency. Symptoms unrelated are not going to improve the testosterone. That's why some men say it doesn't work. They wanted it to work, they expected it to work for the symptoms that they had, but it wasn't, their symptoms weren't related to testosterone deficiency itself. So, so that's something that you'll see as well. But I had a little bit of different stories. So I went from, you know, you see the before and after pictures. Well, I went from kind of an after back to a before over the last year or so. And uh, what happened is I, make a long story short, I had two surgeries. I had a, a back surgeon complication related to that surgery, uh, which they very rarely see. So I had to have a second surgery. Uh, right as I was healing on that, I had hand surgery and I couldn't use my right hand, which is my dominant hand for five solid months. So I was pretty much incapacitated. So with that comes the, uh, you know, you're, you're depressed because you can't do anything. You go from leading a very good lifestyle and, and eating habits and exercising every day. You're, you're lean. Uh, you got a lot of uh, you know, low body fat. Or, you know, you've seen the pictures, but nonetheless, uh, you get a little depressed. So your diet goes down the drain. You, uh, you, you don't sleep as well. You're stressed. You move a practice from one town to another. And with all that, you know, income – on come the symptoms. So here comes some body fat, here decrease in lean muscle mass, uh, in comes the fatigue again, some irritability, sleep problems, uh, wasn't waking up with morning erections, uh, you know, just uh, once again, all the symptoms that you would expect from testosterone deficiency. But yet, when you measure my blood work, it's the same as it was before I had the surgeries beautiful on paper. So if I was just to have posted those numbers on, the, on a website or a forum, they would think, oh my God, they're perfect. You're optimal, you're over optimal. And what would they have advised me to do? Well, you need to change something. It must be your estrogen. And you might, you might need to add HCG. You might need to add down. You know, there, I would get a, you check your cortisol. I would get all these answers that we must change something. But in effect, you've got to know the whole story. That's what treating men is more than just looking at lab values. You cannot treat lab values in isolation. If you did, I mean, I had perfect lab values, but it was everything else. It had nothing to do with hormones. It had everything to do with a change in lifestyle. So hormones are tools, all right? If you don't put them to use, they're no good. I was not putting my hormones to use because of the surgeries, but now I'm back into it and unless I'm already feeling better. 
So I think that men really need to uh, look at themselves very closely and honestly and, and uh, really assess if they are doing everything that they can do uh, to feel better and to be asymptomatic and not just relying on the hormones themselves uh, because I do see that a lot. So that's kind of my story. Uh, you know, went from perfectly optimized feeling-wise and levels to feeling terrible but still having perfectly optimized hormone levels. So that's, uh, that, that's, that's my story. Very good. Steven, you got anything uh, you can add that kind of relates to this? Or? Yeah, sure. Well, as you know, I've been uh, working out uh, almost consistently for over uh, 29 years. So it takes really a lot to build a physique like I have reached now. I have reached my genetic potential, of course, but the help of TRT only took a little bit, me, took me a little bit over uh, what I had reached before. So still a lot of men uh, look at me if they don't know me uh, a lot of years and they think, well, uh, you're on testosterone. No wonder you have a body like that. But they don't realize uh, the pain I suffered three times for 90 minutes a week uh, and um, being consistent to my diet almost all the time. So, um, as you said, uh, both of you said, uh, it takes a uh, lot more than just uh, the hormones. Yeah, exactly. So, there's, they're, they're looking at you say, well, you have to be on high levels of tests. Look at you. They don't exactly. think of the hours and hours and months and years that you spent training and busting your ass at the gym. Yeah. No, that doesn't count. You must be on testosterone. You know, they look at me and they say, well, he doesn't look like a bodybuilder. So, his protocol is probably crap. Testosterone. Yeah, so I don't know anything about testosterone because I don't look like a bodybuilder. Well, I haven't lifted a weight in a year, okay? And I still have like some, some muscle to me. The, 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 the TRT did help me keep some muscle for sure because prior to starting TRT, I had almost none. And if I didn't train, I would, I would wither up to this tiny little toothpick. So does it help? Yeah, it helped. But I'm not going to have a physique like yours just sitting around and just doing my TRT. It just doesn't work that way, all right? It takes quite a bit of discipline and hard work. And the problem is, is most people don't see the hard work. They don't see the hard work that goes in, you know, the, the, the sweat, the tears uh, but that you put in to, to look in that way. And so I'm back to that, but I think that all the time when I'm down there trenched in sweat and pushing a sled through a garage that nobody sees the hard work part. Nobody gets to see that. They just think it just, just, um, I guess, magically appears, but it takes a lot of discipline and hard work. And, and with that, then I will say that, you know, as far as having to look a certain way, I think that's always great if someone can, but the majority of my patients that are middle-aged, 40, 50, and 60, even 70, you know, they, they, some of them, most of them don't even work out, quite frankly. I mean, they, they, they're active. They are very active, but they're not trying to look a certain way. They just wanted to get their life back and feel better. And so that's really what medical TRT is. In fact, I mean, I'm, you know, factoring in somebody being able to work out and lift more in the gym is not anything that I really even question or look at when I'm treating. I'm trying to improve a quality. But what I was saying was that the majority of men that I treat uh, that are 40, 50, 60, and even 70 uh, don't even work out. They're very active, but working out is not uh, one of their their priorities or, or goals as far as uh, looking the part. They just wanted their quality of life back. And that's what really medical TRT is. I'm never really factoring in someone's performance in the gym. In fact, that is a non-factor for me. It's the quality of life that I'm looking to improve. So it's, it's uh, you know, it's, it's sad that uh, people will attack you for not looking a certain way, but uh, they don't understand what real optimization truly is. It's not looking a certain way. It's feeling a certain way. There's, I mean, there's going to be guys like you see, you've seen plenty in the group, Keith, that um, that their, their t t testosterone levels were absolutely in the toilet. They were going mm -hmm. to the gym three, four days a week, and like I'm on the keto diet, whatever, and try as I might, just nothing going on. Right. You know, by giving guys, you know, have to at least have some testosterone, at least right. the efforts in the gym will show some fruit because without it, I mean, they're, just, they're going to be struggling. You know, but right. once they have some of it. I mean, that's it. Now it's up to you to do everything else, the diet, the sleep, the exercise, and, and, and whatnot. Um, that is correct. Because you can have all you need, as I had, all I needed, but became very symptomatic by lifestyle changes for the worst.